We'll finish off uh, the digestive system by looking at chemical digestion and absorption. So the thing of, about chemical digestion of all the foodstuffs is that it happens outside of the body. This is an important aspect. It's not inside the body. It's always catabolic, breaking complex molecules down into simpler molecules. It is driven by enzymes. Uh, without the correct enzymes, then the chemical reactions don't happen. The chemical digestion does not happen. So enzymes are an important thing. And all of this catabolic uh, reaction is hydrolysis breaking apart these bonds by the insertion of a water molecule so that you're putting a hydrogen on one side and you're putting a hydroxyl OH on the other side uh, and th thus breaking the bonds. It doesn't matter whether we're talking fats, carbohydrates, proteins, or nucleic acids. It's an enzymatic hydrolysis which is a catabolic chemical reaction. Now, catabolic reactions release energy. But because this happens outside of the body, that energy that's released cannot be used by the body. This happens in the lumen of the digestive system. And it's the simpler molecules that get absorbed in. So the enzymes, which I've, I've talked about before, uh, in the case of carbohydrates, because that's where we're going to start, are the amylases. Salivary amylase is found in the saliva. It starts breaking down the complex carbohydrates into simpler sugars. Pancreatic amylase breaks it down further into disaccharides. And then the brush border enzymes, the enzymes that are part of the, the cell membrane, the lipid bilayer of the absorptive cells of the mucosa, are the ones that break down the, those final disaccharides into monosaccharides that can be um, absorbed. So dextrinase breaks down dextrin, glucoamylase breaks down uh, breaks down glucose, uh, uh, lactase breaks down lactose, maltase breaks down maltose, sucrase breaks down sucrose. Causes hydrolysis of those to their simpler monosaccharide components. The monosaccharide components are absorbed via secondary active transport. Uh, last semester we talked about secondary active transport. It's about, it, it's sometimes called sodium drag. It's the sodium moves, which then causes osmosis, which then drags along uh, some of the others. Some of it is facilitated diffusion uh, that is, so basically it's gates that open. Um, and then this is all brought to the liver where it's processed. So starches are broken down by salivary amylase, pancreatic amylase. So we get these oligosaccharides and the disaccharides, lactose, maltose, sucrose. The brush border enzymes break those down into galactose, glucose, and fructose. So sucrose is glucose and a fructose. Lactose is galactose and a glucose. Maltose is two glucoses together. Uh, they enter the blood in the capillaries of the villi, and then the hepatic portal vein takes them to the liver. Now, as far as proteins are concerned, the major enzymes 
start with pepsin in the stomach. I've said this a couple of times already, but in the stomach, pepsinogen becomes activated to pepsin. The pepsin breaks the peptide bonds of the proteins so that the proteins uh, become polysac or um, polypeptides. The pancreatic proteases break these large polypeptides into smaller polypeptides, and the brush border enzymes, which are peptidases, break the dipeptides and everything down into small units, either dipeptides or amino acids that can be that can be absorbed. And again, it's secondary active transport that brings it in. So the the fragments of proteins are hydrolyzed into amino acids, which are then absorbed and delivered to the capillary blood. So proteins get broken down by pepsin to large polypeptides. The pancreatic enzymes, the proteases, go to small polypeptides, which are broken down into mostly amino acids. Some of the smaller amino acids can just stay as dipeptides, but for the most part, it's amino acids. And that's what's absorbed. Lipids. Lipids break down, and lipids are a special case because they are not water soluble. They're, they are nonpolar. They have to be emulsified first to create more surface area because the enzymes can only work on the surface of each glob, as it were. So you emulsify using bile. Then the enzymes, which uh, are the lipases, mostly coming from the pancreas, break them down into fatty acids and glycerol. The fatty acids and glycerol get absorbed into the capillary blood or actually often into the uh, lymphatic system and are delivered to the bloodstream that way. So um, a lot of the absorption means that you have to combine these fat soluble things with more polar things. So things like um, proteins to make chylomicrons, uh, et cetera. They enter the lacteals end up in systemic circulation. So flat gets emulsified by the that the it's broken down, absorbed, transported. So all emulsified gets emulsified, broken down by lipases, the mono glycerides, fatty acids, glycerol, all transported, absorbed and transported. Nucleic acids is uh, broken down by pancreatic enzymes. Ribonuclease breaks, breaks down RNA. Deoxyribonuclease breaks down DNA. It's absorbed via acts of transport, uh, and again, it's just hydrolysis breaking the complex molecules into their components, A's, T's, U's, C's, and G's. They can be reused. The brush border enzymes finish it off. So the pancreatic breaks them down into smaller chunks etc. So th those are the four major uh, food molecules. There are minor ones like vitamins 
the fat soluble vitamins get carried along with fat it's interesting in this uh, for use in your nutrition courses the fat soluble vitamins things like vitamin uh, a vitamin d vitamin e vitamin k vitamin a for instance is uh, found in a lot of vegetables and carrots and lettuce and things like that the absorption of that vitamin is really facilitated by by fat because it's fat soluble that's why we like to put butter on our carrots that's why we like to put salad dressing on our salads because then that gives us the fat that will carry those vitamins into us the water soluble vitamins are absorbed by diffusion uh, right. B12 needs the intrinsic factor uh, and then it's absorbed by endocytosis so it's really kind of like a pinocytosis phagocytosis sort of thing uh, vitamin K and B are are synthesized by the bacterial flora of the large intestine so that's where they're absorbed electrolytes get absorbed everywhere uh, but m mostly in the small intestine um, I don't really care that iron and calcium are in the duodenum uh, sodium is sodium potassium pumps um, potassium calcium the only thing really about calcium is that you need vitamin D uh, to absorb it lack of vitamin D means calcium malabsorption water is huge water is absorbed 95% in the small intestine osmosis is the the driving factor as a matter of fact it's probably worth saying that in physiology if water moves what causes it answer osmosis I uh, really concentration gradients usually sodium uh, so 95 percent in the small intestine even though the large intestines one of its few jobs is to absorb water it only reabsorbs or absorbs five percent of the water and so the malabsorption are really pathologies that we're not going to talk about